ready and let's set those body goals. The Health Fix with Mo, a body and mind journey towards a healthier you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Health Fix with Mo. Uh, today, we're talking about a very a supplement that's very close to my stomach, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> to my health. It's it's something that uh well uh how can I put it? Uh I don't have a really good relationship with it, you know, because I've always I've always wondered why people do it, you know. Uh so I've got somebody in the studio today who's gonna break it down and tell me if it's really, really necessary for for us to be in this <laughs> in, in oh, into the supplementation. So we're gonna discuss the the importance of supplementation or the necessity of supplementation, right? As uh, today we have our guest, dietitian. There's a difference between a dietitian and a nutritionist, and she's going to explain what it is. So, our guest today is dietitian Liseho Mabi. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, man. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Let's break it down. Let's get into it. <laughs> Dietitian versus nutritionist. Let's go. All right. So dietitian and nutritionist, we study two different degrees. We can have similar subjects in our coursework, um, but a dietitian is trained to be more clinical and a nutritionist not trained in the same way. So dietitians can do individual consultations with people and nutritionists can only do kind of group education sessions um, and other types of works like in corporate, whereas dietitians, they can't be in uh, the clinical setting the way a dietitian can. Ah, interesting. So why why that path? Why the passion? Is there passion for food? Or is it yes. Okay. <laughs> but in a good way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So when I was in the trick, I actually wanted to be a chef, okay. and then my parents didn't really agree with that oh, they don't like good food uh, it's apparently not <laughs> <laughs> so i decided i was like you know i'm not going to study what you want me to study i didn't want to go into accounting or engineering or things like that i wanted to do something that i really loved to do and i was passionate about and my friend suggested dietetics mm -hmm. and i did take science as a subject um i didn't take consumers unfortunately but i did know i loved food and i watched a lot of cooking shows and things mm -hmm. Um, so I googled it and the very first definition was a Wikipedia definition and it said something about a combination of like food and science and I just fell in love with that already and I just applied to study dietetics mm -hmm. and I got accepted at Tux ah. and during orientation week I just fell more and more in love with it because I got a deeper understanding about what it is and it's just so cool mm -hmm. um, how food affects your body yeah. and your health and vice versa so it's just i just love it wow that's, that's really really good that's interesting <laughs> that's really, so from chef to dietitian yep <laughs> are you a good cook though i am i just don't like cooking anymore surprisingly <laughs> <laughs> <I just don't. laughs> it's uh, quite ironic i just don't like to cook right okay let's get into the topic let's talk supplements mm -hmm. are they necessary no they're not necessary um but it's it's also not like a i guess a black and white thing but just generally they're just not necessary if you have a balanced diet mm. that has enough of your proteins your carbs your fats mm. and your veggies and your fruits that have all your micronutrients that you need if you eat enough during the day mm -hmm. regularly and you eat a variety of foods then you're pretty much getting everything that you need so oh. okay so I, I used to be on that supplementary. I didn't know why I was taking supplements, you know, because mm -hmm. I also, I, I studied sports sciences. Right? Mm -hmm. So, yes, we do do a nutritional course here and there, but then we don't get into the, into the nitty gritty. Yeah. You know? So you, you, you never know. I didn't know why I was taking them. I, I was taking them to bulk up, you know. Well, it, it did work, I won't lie, but I didn't know if I needed them because my genetics didn't need me to take supplements. Mm -hmm. You know, so take me through who who are the people who need supplements. Let's talk about from from a health perspective. Yeah. Okay. So 
a lot of the times people who want to gain weight, supplements can be beneficial. You don't necessarily need them, but a lot of the times, especially in the clinical setting, we have very malnourished patients who really can't afford all the food that they need to gain weight. And so we'll give um, a supplement to help them gain weight and even in hospital just to help them with the weight gain. Um, but if you can afford enough food to help you gain weight, then you can take supplements. I mean, you don't have to take supplements. Um, but if you're also trying to bulk up in the gym, mm -hmm. you just need to be careful of the supplements that you take. Because if you're wanting to bulk up, then you need a certain amount of food. And you can achieve your weight goals with only food, mm -hmm. but it can be impractical to eat all of that food. And that's where your protein supplements can come in it just as might be more practical for you to drink a shake mm. than to drink an entire large meal with like all that meat and you know carbs and stuff you sound you said that like you're against meat are you against meat no 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 <laughs> no <laughs> not against meat not against meat uh, just trying to make sure because there's a whole thing going on over here <laughs> okay okay so Let's break that down a little bit further. Mm -hmm. Okay. I get to the gym. I want to bulk up. I want to lose weight. Oh, oh, I want to lose weight, right? How how do I go about the process of purchasing my stuff? What 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 are the what's my thought process to come into the ultimate decision? Well, I think that you need to consult your dietitian to help you get to that decision because it's not really a generalized thing. I can't say for everybody, they should do the same thing. Um, a dietitian will assess you in depth and get background knowledge on you as well as your anthropometry and, you know, your lifestyle as well as your fitness goals and your activity levels. And then they'll help you get to the decision of whether or not you should be taking a supplement mm -hmm. or if it's necessary or not and what kind of supplement you can take. So it's not really a, something I can answer generally. Have you ever recommended supplements to, to, to a client? In terms of what? In terms of, say, weight gain. Weight gain, yeah. yeah. So I've, I'm a community service dietitian working in a public hospital. Oh, okay. And in our country, the levels of malnourishment are through the roof. So we'll give supplements to patients who qualify if they don't have, you know, if there's specific weight class or BMI range. Um, and we will give them supplements to just help them pick up weight. So it's literally just like a milk. Mm. It's a milk to add extra energy and okay. extra protein. It's not anything too crazy. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's keep on breaking it down. <laughs> keep on breaking it down. So let's talk about supplements for aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Which is generally why a lot of people take these supplements. Yeah. You get to the gym or you watch a YouTube channel. These guys are always on the protein shake, mm. drinking creatine, the uh, pre workouts. Right? Mm. Are there any negative effects from those specific supplements? So there are different types of supplements, and supplements are kind of categorized and then subcategorized. Okay. So they are there's a category for supplements that are effective and they're shown scientifically to be effective. So there's going to be like sports foods for example that you can just take in replacement um because they might just be more practical to okay. to have, you know what I mean, like a maybe like a protein bar. It's just more practical after gym when you're on your way somewhere else instead of a full meal. Mm -hmm. And then there are there's a category where there's little scientific attention with those. So it's not really, you don't know if it's effective or not. And then there are the categories where there's just no efficacy at all. Um, so it really depends on what type of supplement it is and where it falls in that category mm. of supplements. Uh, okay. Is Would you consider steroids a supplement? No. So <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, there's, see, those are one of the other categories that are just, they'll get you a positive drug test. You don't have to take those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, because I've, I've seen, well, 
let me let me let me say this to you. I've seen a lot of people use them, mm. and I've seen it work for a lot of guys. Mm. But also the after effects are messy. Yeah. They're really really messy because yeah. once they stop using them, then you know yeah. the parts that should be working don't yeah <laughs> don't work anymore. <laughs> you know, but also I asked you the question because most people actually come. They do consider it as a supplement. It's a it's a performance improvement drug, right? A performance enhancing drug, mm -hmm. which in its own right qualifies to be a supplement. That it's not the right type of supplement. <laughs> okay. So it's, it also depends if you're a sports person, like are you just a normal person who's trying to bulk up and you have a normal sedentary nine to five job? Mm. Um, are you a bodybuilder? Mm. You know. So it depends. Okay. But That's, steroids, I don't recommend steroids, no. <laughs> I've heard that there are good ones and bad ones. Okay. So there, I've heard that there are steroids that, uh, well, if there's a lack of growth, the same babies, or they just hit them. I don't know how they induce it, but mm -hmm. what about these steroids? Like so under medical supervision. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. if it's under medical supervision, then, you know, is it's, it okay. I guess it's a so, different so, 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 story? So, so. <laughs> I just wanted to keep <laughs> <laughs> because people always have me about these 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 theories topics because I always talk about them. Mm. So they feel they feel attacked. Yeah, they do. <laughs> so don't do steroids, guys. They're not good for you. You heard it from the dietitian. Let's look at herself. <laughs> okay. So the the supplement industry made a lot of money during lockdown because that's when people because there was a whole thing in the media you take your multivitamins and uh what was the other one b12 and the zinc the zincs and uh, and the prices shot up because anybody went to it just came with clicks it was a long queue and then this, there was that supplement aisle was almost empty because yeah. everybody was on that supplement tip yeah why do you think the awareness happened in a time like this more than any other time? Well, I think because people were scared. Mm -hmm. um, it's COVID and we're being told left, right and center, we're pretty much going to die if we get it. Yeah. So obviously people are scared. And if people are saying, you know, the media takes advantage of that also and businesses take advantage of that and they sell you this narrative that this will help you not get COVID okay. um, or this will help you not get sick or this will help you with this. And then under that kind of duress, you'll just accept it as it is. You're not going to go and research scientifically. A lot of the times I think people don't research a lot of things. They just kind of get fed mm. and they just accept what they're told, but they don't go to an actual professional to ask is this true? Is taking so much vitamin C going to help me with anything? Is mm. it going to help me with not getting COVID? Or is it going to help me with this kind of goal or whatever? Mm. And I think people just need to start doing that, start questioning um, what businesses tell them and how they're marketing things to them. Mm. I think they'll make a lot better decisions. Okay. So I'm interested in one supplement right now in particular, mm. the multivitamin. Mm. There are a lot of them in the market right now, right? And all of them promising different varieties or different uh, or different benefits mm. to the human body, or the same benefits, but some are better than others. So they say, let's break down the multi the multivitamin. What what is a multivitamin? So I mean, a multivitamin is just a tablet or a capsule that has different vitamins and minerals. Mm, yeah. Those very same vitamin and minerals that you can find in different fruits and vegetables. Okay. Um, so I don't think a multivitamin is necessary unless you're deficient in something. So that's that's kind of our. Um, rule of thumb is that you don't need a vitamin supplement or a mineral supplement unless you're deficient in a specific vitamin or mineral mm. then you need it to replace all of that and just to you know help you 
Um, but if you're having a balanced diet that has a variety of fruits and vegetables, you can get all the vitamins and minerals you need. So every vitamin and mineral has different functions and how they help your body and improve your health. And every vitamin and mineral is important. And if you're deficient in a specific vitamin and mineral, then you'll see the health effects of that. Um, but if you make sure that you have enough of the food sources and you have a variety of them, um, then you won't be deficient in vitamins and minerals and you won't need any multivitamins. Do you understand? Uh, so, okay. so every person has something called an RDA. Mm -hmm. So it's the recommended daily allowance. Okay. Um, so there's a minimum limit that you are allowed or that is recommended. And then there's also an upper limit. Okay. And once you reach that upper limit, then you get into toxicity. And with supplements, they're so concentrated and so dense in the specific mineral or vitamin mm -hmm. that it's very kind of risky where you can get up, you know, to the upper limit. And then there's also health effects of toxicity okay. as well. So if you are eating your five fruits and vegetables a day, variety. So variety, you can think of it as different colors. Then, you know. You say five fruits and vegetables. A five day. fruits and vegetables. So <laughs> <laughs> you can always say you can either do two veggies and three fruits or three two fruits and three veggies. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> every day. And no, I know some people already. are going to be listening to that part. Five. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> Okay, so can you take, can you take, can you have an overdose on, on, on like multivitamins? Yeah, you can. Okay. You can. Just it's like just die from too much vitamins. <laughs> I don't want to say you'll die. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to scare anybody. <laughs> but you just need to be careful and you don't really need to take them. It's just kind of. Uh, ha do you take supplements? No, I don't. Is it never have? No. So. Um, my current weight gain, well, my current fitness journey is just gaining a little bit of weight, so just gaining muscle. Mm. So I'll make my own, um, like, energy, protein energy shake mm. after gym that I'll have, but it literally just is whole ingredients. I love whole foods. I don't like manufactured foods or anything like that. So um, okay. I'll literally just have milk and eggs and... <laughs> So you're just overdosing on milk. <laughs> <laughs> so you just, oh, you just. <laughs> so how's 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 that journey going for you? So without, do you think it it it'll take longer for you to to get to your goal without the supplement? Um. Yeah. Well. No. Um. Yes, Andrew. So if I just plan out an entire meal plan for myself with just food and I'm eating however many times a day with a specific amount of energy and protein that I'm going to need, okay. um, then it'll be the same thing. Yeah. So that it's just more of like the practical thing yeah. to, to get in all that energy and protein all uh, at once. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So if I just carry on eating like normal, and without the extra food, then yes, it'll take me longer. But if I... Yeah, you must eat a lot then. <laughs> <laughs> I like food. <laughs> Do you? Well, I guess to be in the industry that you're in, you have to have some sort of passion for it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I already told you my history of supplementation. I'm going to tell you what I do now. So I've got like a cocktail that I use now, right now. Mm -hmm. right? Um, and the reason why I decided to have this topic is because... I needed to get an understanding because obviously I, I, I do do my own research, but then it's always better to hear it from the horse's mouth, you know, for lack of a better phrase. <laughs> so I've got multivitamins. I'll take uh, an omega-3 capsule. I'll take uh, some Calmac, right, which I don't think I need, but I mean, it's there, so I'll take it. And that's my cocktail. And then I'll take it with an if it isn't. Mm -hmm. right? So that's like a double dose of multivitamin already. And then when we share, like we share our posts, I see my friends also have like a similar cocktail going on. Mm. 
And this is something that never happened before, right? It only started happening only recently, like during lockdown, right? And I always wanted to know why, say for omega-3, for instance, right? They always, the capsule says it's for brain functionality, right? But I don't feel any difference after taking it. Like, I don't feel like my brain going to superpower mode. I'm like, hey, yeah, Mo, you, 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 you make a mind now. You? <laughs> you know what I mean? So I just want you to explain to the, to the layman right now, somebody who just woke up and is going to have a cocktail why it's important to do that research because they might be taking something that they already have in it like me you know what i mean i might have enough calcium in my body and and i'm still taking a calcium supplement mm -hmm. right how do you how do you how do you how do i phrase this question how do you tell that person what to do? Like, how do, how do how do you guide them in that process and that thought process? On, on on choosing supplements. On choosing yeah. supplements. Because I have I have a cupboard full of supplements which I don't think I need. So. Yes, you probably <laughs> don't need them. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's. I think you can achieve all your intakes through eating well. Okay. So if you have a balanced diet, right, um, that is the foundation of your nutrition or your health and wellness mm. is having a balanced diet. Um, and then supplements are literally, it's, it's, it's exactly what the word means as a supplement mm. is to fill in of the gaps to add on to your balanced diet so if you have a balanced diet you see in your balanced diet what might be missing mm. and then so for example um if you're vegetarian or you, if you're vegan mm. you're going to make sure you have a balanced diet so you have all your oh sorry <laughs> your proteins carbs your fats and then your micronutrients um but Vegans and vegetarians, a lot of the times, specifically vegans, they lack vitamin B12, okay. which is found mostly in animal food sources. Okay. So from that, they'll think, okay, um, well, I need vitamin B12, so then I'll go get a supplement for it because I can't have it in my diet because mm. I'm vegan. Mm. But if you kind of eat most things so if you have no food restrictions you generally don't need any vitamins and minerals um or you know supplementation of that sort mm. um especially with things like fat soluble vitamins so there's fat soluble vitamins and water soluble vitamins fat soluble vitamins get stored in the fat cells of your bodies and then your water soluble vitamins often get taken out really easily because they're water so they can go out with your urine and stuff. Okay. so they don't get, stay in your body for long okay. but fat soluble vitamins stay in your body for longer so okay. that's like your vitamin a d e and k mm -hmm. um and also like your omega-3 omega-3 is a fat mm -hmm. so if you're having that it's going to stay in your body for a lot longer so if you're having supplements for that every day you're adding on to the storage of that ah, okay. and you're risking toxicity ah. um, and people need to be mindful that toxicity is just as bad as deficiency okay. so you just need a balance ah. you just need enough of everything you don't need more because a lot of the times what your body does is if you're taking in something and it's more than what your body needs mm. then it's going to excrete it's going to take it out and that's going to go through your kidneys okay. as well okay. so just because you're putting in more doesn't mean you're making your body need more. Okay. Your body doesn't need more of whatever you're having. It's just going to take out what it doesn't need. Uh, and that can also be damaging for your kidneys. So if you're taking too much protein, I remember seeing um, my friend had a protein shake, mm. protein powder at mm. their house. And it said it had like 53 grams of protein per serving. And now just to put it into perspective, yeah. when we're looking at how high a you know, protein isn't something. We look at the per 100 gram column on the yeah. food label. And if it's like 
14 grams, it's already high. Like yeah. it's quite high. So if it's 53 grams per serving, I'm just thinking that's really, really high. And that means it's going through your kidneys, especially mm. protein goes straight through your kidneys and then you're damaging your kidneys mm. if you're not using all of it up. Okay. So, yeah. Sheesh. I need to reconsider all these yeah, things. Yeah, you, you, you do. You do. You don't want uh, to be... And you touched on something very interesting in that last part about uh, vegetarians and veganism, mm -hmm. right? I know most people that get into being vegetarian or vegans is all value aligned. It's a value alignment. They mm -hmm. don't want to. Uh, they don't want to hurt animals, or they don't, mm -hmm. you know. So they go plant based, and I, I respect that choice. But I always say they should consult first because I. I've I've got friends who went vegan and I see they're struggling, man. Yeah. Because you could you could literally tell that dog or something is really, really missing in your body. You yeah. need to you need to consult because I also get a lot of slack from the vegans as well. Because mm -hmm. I always say you can't just go vegan. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's 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 a nice to do, yes, but why are you doing it? Uh, you know what I mean? It's a very big commitment a, and you need to be, you know, very knowledgeable mm. about it. It's not like it's super difficult to be vegan mm. or vegetarian. It's it's fine. Mm. You just need to go and get education about how you must eat now. You mm. can't just assume that this is what you must eat because mm. you could lie in now a protein deficiency or a specific vitamin or mineral deficiency because you've cut something out of your diet. Mm. Um, so I would just kind of advise for anybody who's about to change their nutrition habits or eating habits or lifestyle to go and consult with a dietitian mm. to really find out how to do it well. Because it is a bit of a dramatic switch, right? Mm. Uh, you grew up all your life eating meat and your body has or I'll, I'll assume a sufficient amount of protein or the, the, the benefits that come with meat and then you take that away from your body and then all of a sudden your body is starting to react in different ways to different situations mm -hmm. you know what I mean because the vegan trail is yes a lot of celebrities are vegan these are people who have consulted and that's all I'm saying before you become vegan just go and just find go out. And find out if it's for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We, we we get it. We get the value alignment. We get we get that, you know, you own the, the whole Peter trail, but it's cool. <laughs> yeah. But just, there's definitely nothing wrong with being vegan yeah. or vegetarian. Plant based diets actually shown have shown more health benefits. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is the thing of if you don't know what to do, then you definitely need to go and talk to somebody who can help you. Mm. Um, because even with like your iron sources, you find a lot of them in your your meat mm. and your animal products. So you just need to find out which plant sources have those and mm. which plant sources have proteins. So that that being said. Is there such a thing as natural supplements? Natural supplements. <laughs> yeah. Because like some, some, some of these brands you see on the, on the, on the, on the, on the malls, on the aisles, are labeled as natural supplements. Yeah. And I've never understood what a natural supplement is. Yeah. So I've never actually looked at one of those products just because I'm not a supplement um, person. So I don't really look very intensely into supplements, but mm -hmm. I would just assume. Um, sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. I would just assume that they're made from natural ingredients. So maybe they'll um, just concentrate everything, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I'm just assuming. I've never really looked into it in depth. Uh, okay. So what you're saying is that anyone who wants to start taking supplementation should consult with a dietitian first. Yeah. Before before jumping into so if if that's the case why why are, are these these supplements being sold in ours or over the counter because right now we're just going there on a whim you know what i mean yeah because from what you how you've described it it can get really dangerous yeah you know because yeah. I mean? when we talk about toxicity levels in your body that's something that could like you know, thing affect your long-term 
health. Yeah. Oh, so how how are these things being sold over the counter? Because uh, they're not regulated. And that's really the only answer. They're just not regulated. Okay. By the law, so they're they can do pretty much whatever they want. Sheesh, that is. Yeah, which is scary that it's the law so is not regulating something so serious. Yeah. Um, and that's something everybody also needs to consider mm. is that these people are just putting in whatever that they want. They're not being regulated mm. by anybody. Damn. So I'd rather go to the fruit aisle. <laughs> yes, and fruit is delicious. <laughs> it's delicious. Just additional, I, I, I like my food. And it has so many different types of benefits. It's, yeah. It's crazy how whole foods, that's literally all you need. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So food. I was having this conversation with my mom. Actually, My mom is a home economics teacher, right? Mm -hmm. And we were talking about this topic of about food. And then she considers some foods as because she doesn't take supplements as well. She'll mm. take some food as a supplement to, you know, well, that's how she makes sense of it. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, she's like, no, she'll have an apple because, you know, she doesn't want to take a vitamin C capsule, you know, something like that. And I love that mindset. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but let's talk about now the, the grams in an apple versus the grams in a vitamin C capsule. So how much how much do you get from an apple I mean, how much would you get from a tablet i honestly would be lying if i knew the exact amount of every vitamin and mineral is in it? each um is food it? source <laughs> i'm asking this because some people would rather pop a pill because they'd, they'd compare they're like ah, it's yeah apple. a lot me, of the times giving me 10 grams <laughs> this pill is gonna give me 25 maybe just pop a pill <laughs> yeah so a lot of the time supplements are more concentrated so they are more likely to have much more um of a specific vitamin in them mm. compared to the food source but you can't look at it as one food source mm. you know you can't just say compared to an apple because that's not you're not supposed to only have one apple a day you're supposed to have an apple and an orange and this mm, uh, okay know, beetroot and this and all of that stuff how much together does uh, it make and how much do you need um and a lot of times the supplements will give you more than you need and mm. it's just going to get taken up by your body anyway i've always wondered where they extract that vitamin c from <laughs> <laughs> that's a food science topic <laughs> just <job. laughs> so they put this whole vitamin c in this tablet yeah. wow where did they get it where did they get it wow dog. okay no man, this is this is an interesting topic. I'm 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 really really enlightened right now, you know, I'm because I think I I was I was I was just like following the blind, it's like the blind following the blind <laughs> when it comes to this topic, you know, because this is like a multi-billion dollar industry, right? Yeah, and people keep, will keep on buying supplements, and I think it's important for them to have some sort of knowledge when they get or when they get into the mall or with this game on the decision process that they have to make. And I think a show like this would actually give them that insight. Yeah. You know, uh, and I appreciate you coming through and sharing your insight with us because this is, I'm, I'm, I don't know, man, I might be saving a lot more money. Yeah. <laughs> and you can yeah. buy more fruits and vegetables. Also, apples are cheaper, right? They are. <laughs> <laughs> they last longer. <laughs> they do. They do. Okay. So, yo, yeah, this is, this is insane. Supplements are considered, are they pharmaceuticals? And they're sold by big pharmaceuticals, big yeah. pharma, right? Okay, yeah. so it starts starting to make some putting all the pieces together right now. <laughs> yeah, because also, like, you know, when, when your parents get older, they take it, the pills that they take. Yeah. yeah. Are those are those supplements as would they are they considered as a supplement, like a, a panado or like a painkiller? Mm, no, so those are medical drugs oh, that okay. um, have specific ways of alleviating whatever. So it's like a panado, it has a specific way of alleviating that pain. Okay. And then that's what it does. So it's not like a supplement. No, it's a it's a drug. It's a uh, okay. 
yeah it's a medical drug okay now that i'm i'm, I'm gonna ask this question <laughs> And also some, some of these questions I'm asking because <laughs> you know when I when I post a subject topic for, for my next show, mm -hmm. some of my friends are like, yeah, no, you should ask them this, uh, you should ask them that. Uh, I'm gonna ask you this question because one of my friends had <laughs> asked me this week to ask you this question specifically. Because she's on a weight loss journey, okay. right? And we've already okay, we probably already covered this. But she is adamant that she wants to start taking supplements or she needs to start taking supplements, mm -hmm. right? Would you recommend anything? Like, uh, what what are the supplements that people generally take to, to lose weight? I actually don't know. What what supplement would you need to to lose weight? So for, so for like weight loss, um, this is how weight loss works. It has to do with energy balance. So energy taken in is the amount of food that you're eating. Mm. Okay, so food is energy. Yeah. And then energy taken out is how much you use up during the day. So activity is energy taken out. Okay. So the more energy you take in compared to how much you take out, so if you take, if you take in more than you use up, mm. then you'll gain weight. If you take in less then you use up, then you'll lose weight. Okay. Um, so weight loss has to do with an energy deficit. Okay. So eating less than you usually would eat and working then, more. Oh, okay. So I I don't know the supplement. <laughs> so that's like how weight loss works. Like you don't need anything else. Yeah. I'm sending this podcast to her first. I'm going to send this <laughs> session. <laughs> I'm going to edit this up. Like, hey, yeah. this, this is the question that you asked me. To ask me. Yeah, so she, this is the answer that you got. She doesn't need a this supplement. Is the, this, is the, this is the professional, the pro, the pro told you, you know, because I'm, 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 I'm in, I'm in the health and fitness industry, right? Mm -hmm. But also, I, I'm a trainer. Like, I'm, so we, we have to, oh, like, I'm a, I'm a wellness consultant. So we'd have to bring in people like you to come give us a workshop like this, like we're talking about right now, right? Because we aren't privy to this, because we didn't study this in depth, mm. right? Because people will usually come like, no, I need a program and I need an eating plan. I'm like, ah, the program I can do. Mm. The eating plan, not so much, because yeah. I don't think that's in my scope of practice. You know yeah. what I mean? And I'm not going to sell somebody an eating program. And I have, I'm like, no, I don't. You have no idea. I have no idea. Just now I'm, I'm, I'm putting nuts in your thing and you just allergic to that stuff yeah or, and I'm, or I'm telling you to take a supplement or i'm telling you to so i don't i don't i don't play that game you know I'd, I'd rather have somebody like you come in and we consult together like if it's a group of people we do a consultation and then we'll take we'll take it from there you know I mean? whether you do the eating plan or i do it or you guide me to that through that eating plan mm -hmm. so i see a lot of trainers doing it i don't think it's safe because I know it's not in the scope of practice. They're not allowed to do that. Mm. Uh, they're going to have me for saying this. Sheesh. I'm being it doesn't matter. I'm being they controversial aren't. today. No, they aren't allowed. Sure. Unless they're a dietitian. Unless exactly. they're trained. A registered dietitian. To right? do it. Yeah. Sheesh. Now they're going to have these Instagram trainers. are going to be like, hey, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Get your hand out of my pocket, man. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> I'm just here to tell the truth, right? Yeah. It's not controversial if it's the truth. Yeah. Right. I think, I definitely think people need to be more careful about where they get their, you know, nutrition advice. There's lots of dietitians on social media who are giving out evidence-based um, education on their pages. And I think you should look out more for those people. Mm. I think a lot of the times on the internet, the internet makes eating healthy seem very, very difficult. Mm. And for some reason, that's easier to take in and accept yeah. and follow than just to be told, eat balanced, eat healthy, eat all your proteins and your carbs and your vitamins and your minerals yeah. in your food, you know, have five fruits and vegetables a day. Mm. That's all you need. Mm. And that for some reason is more difficult to hear than cut out this sure. or cut out that sure. and take this instead. Yeah. Cause now the messaging is different now when you, when you start talking like that, right? Mm. Cause somebody's just thinking like, but this is something I've been eating my whole life. Now you're mm. just telling me to, to cut, cut it out. out. 
Yeah. Hey, no, dog. Like it's, it, now, 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 I understand because now when when you message it like that, it becomes really, really difficult. Because now these you know, these social media coaches are a problem sometimes. Mm. But, you know, <laughs> the, the the Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> what do we call them in the office? Uh, Hollywood traders. That's what we call them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And thank you for coming through, man. This has been very, very enlightening. Thank you. Uh, I hope the people will enjoy this podcast. And I, I, know, I know they definitely enjoy this podcast. So whoever's going to listen to this uh, you must make what, five, five fruits and vegetables. Right? A day. <laughs> must make better decisions. <laughs> so what, what we took away from this podcast is that you actually might not or do not need supplements you know what i mean so and before you do take supplements consult with a dietitian first right so that you know what kind of supplements you need to take when you need to take them and how you need to take them yeah i would say your doctor and your dietitian so um to see if you have any type of deficiency and then go to your dietitian and dietitian will always be food first so okay yeah all right all right, cool. Well, as if you're listening to this, you are on the Your Media page, uh, yourmedia.co.za, your underscore media ZA on the socials, on Instagram and on Twitter. And this is the Health Fix with Mo. How do, how do people get a hold of you on the, on the, on the gram, though? Um, yeah, you can find me on Instagram. It's Les, uh-huh. L-E-S dot Mabe, M-A-B-E. Okay. You want to give out your number? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> okay. Uh, guys, this is the Health Fix with Mo. Uh, join us next week for another episode. We have another interesting guest for you guys. Cheers. Peace out.